This is One on One. Dr. Mark Connolly, Chairman of Surgery at St. Joseph's Regional Medical Center is with us. Good to see you, Doctor. Good to see you, Steve. I want to talk about um, certain minimally invasive surgeries, particularly when we talk about um, alternatives to heart surgery, open heart surgery. Um, who is a candidate for open heart surgery versus the alternative, and I believe the alternative, I'm calling it MIDCAB, which stands for M-I-D-C-A-B, stands for? Minimally invasive direct coronary bypass grafting. So if a patient presents with blockages of his heart arteries, in right. other words, he has chest pain when he walks or plays tennis, and he's found to have blockages of his heart, ar uh, his heart arteries, there's different options. You know, and it really depends on how many blockages he has. If he only has a couple blockages, then he's a candidate for this minimally invasive direct coronary bypass grafting where we actually use the Da Vinci robot. The, the Da Vinci robot. Right. We're going to be showing some video of that in the right. film. Uh, shots of it. What is the Da Vinci robot? Well, actually, it's a, it's a very highly sophisticated... We're actually looking at some video of it right now. It's, it's a highly sophisticated machine where you actually are able to put the physician, the surgeon's hands inside a body cavity. So, to, so what we do in this mid-cab procedure, someone presents with a blockage, usually with an artery on the top of their heart, and then we use the Da Vinci robot, putting actually our hands inside the patient and we sit away at a console, so we're actually manipulating these robotic articulating arms inside the body, and we take an artery down underneath the breastbone, it's called the internal mammary artery, and we use that for one of the bypasses. So the patient only has three little tiny ports that are about the size of your baby mm -hmm. finger, where we put these arms in, in a very highly sophisticated 3D HD camera, so we can actually really see what we're doing when we're dissecting. So we take this artery down, and then after we, do, after, we, after we use the robot, we take the robotic arms out, and then we go ahead and make a little tiny three-inch incision, or usually it's about two-inch incision, right underneath the nipple, and we're able to kind of spread the ribs a little bit, and the heart's right there. So we're able to take this artery and bypass the artery on the heart that has the blockage. So it's really a minimally invasive technique. Patients are usually have their breathing tube taken out in the operating room, they're usually sitting in a chair six to eight hours later, they, and they end up going home in one to two days. Now, a standard operation where, right. you, where you go through the breastbone, the patient usually needs multiple bypasses. They have a lot of blockages, so you need more exposure, so you have to go through the breastbone, and it's a much more invasive procedure. The patient's usually in the hospital a little so longer. recovery longer? The recovery's longer. The mid-cab patients go back to work sooner. They go back to their normal activities sooner. It takes about two months for this incision, the, the breastbone incision, to actually heal. So patients have about a, a two-month period where they really can't go back to work, particularly if they're a construction worker mm. or they do manual labor, because it takes time for that to heal. But doctor, not everyone is a candidate. I'm curious about this. Not everyone is a mm. candidate for the minimally invasive procedure, right? That's correct. Wh who would be the more likely candidate? Well, it's, it's a patient usually who has a blockage just on the artery on the top of his heart, but we're actually doing something. His or her. Yeah, his, his or her heart. And we're actually doing something called a hybrid procedure. You know, patients can also be candidates for stenting. You know, they don't right. need surgery. So we're actually putting kind of the best of both worlds together, the surgeons and the cardiologists to do the stenting. So let's say a patient has multiple blockages and then the artery on the top of the heart is a very difficult artery for the cardiologist to actually deal with with stenting. So we do the mid-cab procedure with the robot. The patient usually goes home for a week or two and then they come back and the other arteries mm -hmm. that they have blockages in, they actually get stenting. So in that procedure, you go home the next day. So it's kind of getting the minimally invasive approach of, uh, of best of both worlds, really, I like to call it, between surgery and cardiology. Moving outside of the cardiac-related uh, surgeries, what else can the da Vinci do? Well, actually, cardiac surgery is one of the, the lower volume procedures in the United States. What's the higher volume? The higher volume is prostat prostatic surgery, prostatectomies, and also partial nephrectomies, where someone has a kidney tumor and they need part of their kidney removed. And one of the fastest growing is in GYN surgery, hysterectomies, myomectomies, you know, things that have to do with dealing with anything that's in the pelvis. And that's really growing substantially. Why is that? 
Um, it's just the progression of technology and the progression of surgeons kind of embracing the new technology and moving it into other areas. What I'm curious about is the training here. I mean, it's a fascinating to look at the visuals, you know, mm -hmm. and you look at the, 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 the mechanics of it, the technology, but the training of it, how does it take place? How long is it? How extensive is it? Talk about that. That's, that's a great question because there's actually been a recent lawsuit out in California. I heard about that. Right, where there's been some poor patient outcomes and they've actually been suing Intuitive, which is the Da Vinci robot company. At St. Joe's, we put a very kind of strict credentialing process in place. And uh, one of the, we just have our robot for about two and a half years. And fortunately, we were able to purchase what's called a dual console. So in other words, in the past, you just used to be able to have one surgeon, one console. Right. So we have a dual console. <clears throat> so when a, when a physician's learning, he can actually have a very experienced surgeon with him, just like he would when he's learning in a regular open operations when he's doing his residency training, helping him manipulate the arms, make sure that all the dissection's appropriate. And the other thing that we actually have is called a simulator. They develop these very sophisticated video type games where you're actually able to learn how to use the arms and use the robot without operating on a patient. And that technology has been around probably just about two years. So in the past, you used to kind of play around with the robot a little bit, maybe in a cadaver lab, and then eventually to patients. But uh, now we have these other facilities so that we can really have high quality surgery. For someone like yourself, given your position and your experience, what's it been like for you to see these advances? It's pretty incredible. It's actually very incredible. When I trained in heart surgery you know, many years ago, everything was completely open, big incisions. I mean, patients had good results, but it's major, major surgery. But now moving into smaller incisions, minimally invasive incisions, the patients are happier. There's less stress to the body. So the patients actually recru recover quicker and there's actually better outcomes. There's less bleeding, there's less wound infection. So the complications that you see with the major operations are actually less with these. And the patients are able to get back to work sooner, get back to their normal lives sooner, which is very, very gratifying. For people watching us right now in the couple minutes we have left, say they wanted to get more information, they wanted to also make the best decisions for themselves, you know, as to what's right for them. Obviously they have to consult their physician, their surgeon, but what about a lot of people go online and they just search Da Vinci, you know, or minimally invasive procedures? You can get good information, but isn't it, sometimes on the internet, it can be confusing. Yes. Does yeah. that concern you sometimes? It does, it does. And I encourage patients to go on the internet because it's a great source. And there's a lot of these websites are actually very developed. We have a robotic web, part of our website right. has robotic information for patients. Uh, but the more they learn and the more they know when they come and talk to you, the better informed they are. And if they get, get misinformation, you're usually able to handle that when you see them in the office. Uh, but it, there's a lot of information out, and Da Vinci has a very developed website, actually. Uh, it has a lot of patient-focused questions and answers, and I would encourage people to go there. Before I let you out of here, where do you think this is going in the next five to ten years? Well, the other field that is going to probably grow, at least robotic surgery, is going to be in general surgery. General surgery? Which would be colon resections for cancer, for colon cancer, or removing a gallbladder for someone who has gallstones and probably doing you know, more sophisticated surgery on the pancreas and things like that. So the technology is actually developing where they call it, a, it's called a single site. You know, when I mentioned to the mid-cap procedure, we had three holes for the ports and the camera. Now, now they have the technologies progressing where they make a little tiny incision right in the umbilicus and they're able to put the, the arms that we use to operate as well as the camera. So you can imagine, let's say, a, a young female who has a, a gallbladder that needs to be removed. The only incision that you'll see is in the umbilicus. So you won't really see any incisions. So it's a great advance, you know, particularly not just cosmetically, but you know, down the road as far as using more minimally invasive incisions. So the standard operation would be using a laparoscope. So she would have multiple well, incisions. A laparoscope real quick, which is? A, a laparoscope is basically kind of a, a, it's a scope with a camera on the end of it. And that's kind of one of the traditional ways that we kind of do these general surgery procedures. And it has a camera on the end of it, and then you kind of put your arm, you put these instruments through different ports, and you manipulate the instruments from the outside the patient, as opposed to the robot where you're manipulating the tissues and doing your surgery inside the patient. 
Did you ever think it would come to this? Never. <laughs> I, ne I never did. I mean, in my training, you know, well, it was, it, never. Well, Dr. Mark Connolly, who is the chairman of surgery at St. Joseph's Regional Medical Center, I want to thank you for talking about not just what is happening, but what potentially could happen in the future. It's amazing stuff. Keep us posted, okay? Thank you. Thank you, doctor. That's great. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Wells Fargo, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, the New Jersey Education Association, New Jersey Council of County Colleges, New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, PSENG, and by Verizon Communications. Promotional support provided by The Star Ledger and NJ.com, and by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.